Hello, welcome from, uh, to my tutorial in which we are going to talk about step by step tutorial of the basic pattern for data analytics in stocks prediction. So, before this, I created a video about the installations of iPython notebook and also uh, the installation of and some a few of basics of how to open iPython notebook and start coding right away. So, if you never see it here, Please go down to the description below and then check the link there for my videos. Alright? So I'm going to assume that you have iPad and notebook going around like open like this. So the first tutorial of this tutorial, I'm going to talk about loading up the Yahoo Finance datasets. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, what this talk prediction about, feel free to click the link um, that talks about the uh, the stocks predicting um, overview that, that I already talked about. So, all right. So for this loading Yahoo Finance data set, we are going to use Pandas Web Data Reader. So that's creates an extension of Python libraries to communicate with our most updated financial data. And this includes so many resources out there. But to let you get a glimpse of what's really happening or how is it useful is that I'm going to start coding and you can just follow along with me, alright? So the first of all is that uh, you might see that there's a hashtag in top of the editor. This is just basically the comments. So I comment on it, I can read it, but the computer don't need to care about it. It's basically not a code, it's just a comment. But if I were to make something, then uh, afterwards, uh, after the import, then we want to create a start and end time and we want to create data set. So how do we do that? Alright, first of all, it's importing pandas. So, I want to import pandas as is. Alright, let's follow along. And afterwards, import date time and is. Alright, oh, sorry, import date time and Okay, moving on is import pandas, uh, import. And uh, uh, web. Okay, I can't remember how to use web reader. Web. Alright, let me check. Oh, pandas data reader. Pandas data reader as web. Alright, and I almost forgot that I should put data here. Data. Okay, and finally, I want to import the most important thing is pandas. Uh, okay, from pandas import to comma data frame. Okay, so try to run it and then see there's no error. So if there's nothing that is affected down here, there's no error message, then it is correct. Hopefully, yeah. But basically, there is no problem that the computer can detect as of now. Okay, so I'm going to explain to you what it means by this. All right. So import pandas as pd. Basically, I want Python to take a look at the pandas which continue. Um, like Anaconda has already passed, and I want Python to see. Hey, I'm going to make a comments from the pandas library. Please take the pandas because I'm going to use it for my data analytics toolbox. Alright, so then after this, I can run and just command and they can do all the bits for me that I need. Right? Then afterwards, I want to import date time. So date time is basically just the date, what's the date of today? And maybe like, oh, this today is 1st of January 2017, so 1 slash 1 slash 2017. But we need to make sure that it's at the format that the computer understands. So therefore, we use import data time to facilitate us creating a format that the computer understands. Okay, that's it for. And finally, the crux of the data loading that we are going to use is pandas data reader dot data as well. So basically, the data reader dot data communicate with financial institutions or maybe data sources and get the most updated data based on the updates of these data sources. I'm going to show you more um, in a short while. And according to pandas series and data panel, so I'm going to show you what it is. Okay. So first of all, we need to create start and end time. So for the start time, so start time is basically 
actually uh, well date time date time and we put in our dates so what we do is just we can see and tap here to see that the format is year month the year month and date so shift tab is basically just a help help piece I want to see what I should put here. So shift tap one, then you can get something like this. Shift tap twice, then you can get an extension. Shift tap three times, then you get a specific window. So it's very useful way if you cannot remember what this uh, is used for. So there is the computation here, All right? But you can see here that I should put year, month, day, hour, minute, second. So if you see here something like this, it's actually quite optional. So I can just put year, month, and day. So for example, I want the start time to be 2 and 10, comma, 1, 1, means that first option is 2 and 10. So that's our start time, okay? And what's for our end time? So our end time will be date time, date time, now. So what now does is that you can do the same thing again by shift and tap for the help. And basically it just renew that time with the local day and time. So if today is like 15th of January, then you will put next week of January. And what's your time at your laptop? 3 p.m. So if you put that 15th of January, 3 p.m. As simple as that, okay. Right. Then afterwards, now it's time for us to collect the data, pull it, and put it into a data frame. So I'm going to put DF. DF is data frame, that's my data frame. And I'm going to call web dot capital D. And I can just click that so it has auto complete for me. Data reader. And now I need to put some arguments here, but I'm not sure what argument to put. So what should I put? So I can uh, shift that again. And I can see here that I can put name, data source, start, and like how whatever. But most importantly, I need to put this name, data source, start, and end. Alright. So I will put the stock market. In this case, let's predict Apple A P L. Okay. And the source will be Yahoo. So I want to take from Yahoo Finance. Okay. And the start time is start. And the end time is end. And that's it. Basically, just run it, controls enter, or just sell and run it. Okay, and it finished running, but it doesn't show anything. Don't worry, very simple, just enter and then the air, then run it again. And you will see that it directly pulls in the data from 2010-0104 until 2017-0113, which is today is 15. So it's the latest updated data according to data source. Right, that is inside this API, of course. But you might say, ah, oh, it's too much. I just want to get a few. So it's very simple. What you can do is that the app of head. So head will get the very first few data, and then you will find all of this open, high, low, close, open, edit, close. Or maybe you can do the latest ones. The latest ones is at the bottom of the table. So just change the detail. So paint and tail. Then you get. Uh, the data from 17 to 15 until 09. Notice here that it's very table like. So, this is the, one of the best things about Panda is that it's very intuitive because it's like Excel. It has a table, and then the table will have columns, which is open, high, low, close, for the and close, and close, which is identified as a date. Remember that Excel has 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So, basically, this date is the index, the one to people for five that you can use as a rope. Alright? And it's already predetermined by the panda. So all you need to do is just doing this and then you will get all the different data sets. And now I'm going to talk to you about series and data frame. So what is series? What is data frame? Data frame is the whole thing here. The whole thing, the this whole book is data frame. It's a table. And series is basically combination, uh, it's basically columns. So open is a series, high is a series, low is a series, and so on. And many series combined together, as what you can get, is the table. But it's good 
by the index. So the date is the index. So very simple put, okay? Now we talk about kind of data reader. So what else can I do with it? Well, you can just go through the documentation, go down here, and then you see remote data access. And if you want to Google Finance, for example, or on Yahoo, then you can just Google it. Then there is a there's a direction. So you can just copy paste all of this, or you can just change Yahoo to Google. So let's change Google now. and then run it again. And then you see a different format. So open high low close and not not I did uh not I just send close but I DJ close but just close. So it's a different format, so it's fine. And if you're Microsoft, then you can just MSFT here and it will run for you. So any kind of different stocks that this data source will have. But this is not limited to data source. If you see here right the documentation, there are still more uh resources. And you can go for Eurostat, for example. For example, I want this data about the collisions, about maybe different kind of type real accident. And I can just copy paste this one. And then just replace this one. So it's a minimum kind of uh, changes. And then you just run it. And after you run it, you get a completely different data set with a certain time period. So so it's very cool, and there are so many things that you can do also. There are OECD, and there's also, uh, if I'm not wrong, there's also stocks. Stocks is um, the Oanda Party Historical Rate. That is about stocks. So Oanda Party Intellectual Rate. So these are about stocks. And it's very cool to see how well documented these are, so that you can just pull the data directly from the internet. Updated data, you don't need to go the hassle to CSV and then just download, say, download, say, and then compare it one by one using Excel. But just by paying us the loan, you can just get this data directly from the website and just do it together. Alright? So basically, um, that's it. Or maybe just one more. Uh, I'm doing, okay, here I'm doing competitor analysis. But I will cover it on the uh, subsequent tutorials. But what you can do is that I'm actually pulling the data uh, of a bunch of companies that I type. So I can just do this and copy paste here. Alright? And I just want to take the edges and post comparison and from Yahoo for different companies. Alright? Then I just run it. I expose this DF com, so I just DS com. I can just run it, and there you go. You will find all of this stuff. And I don't want to see the cell only, I want to see everything. So you just DF com. Right? So you can find the data and comparisons of ADJ codes from SP, Apple, GE, Google, IBM, Microsoft in one table in this method. And finally, you can see that it contains 1,071 books. How easy is it? Okay, that's all. Moving on, we are going to talk about exporting the data. With that, thank you so much. Sampai jumpa lagi di pelajaran selanjutnya. See you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.